Welcome to the Darwinian Delusions channel. Today I want to cover human chimp ancestry, human ape ancestry. Now this is shown to the public like a brute fact. It's just a part of reality. It's a no-brainer. You'd basically have to be an idiot to deny human chimp ancestry. This is the sort of pressure that Darwinists actually put on the public through documentaries, through popular videos, through science popularizers. Yet, it's quite interesting that when you actually go and look at the academic literature, you find out this is a speculative idea based upon assumptions and there's conceptual problems with those assumptions. Now, human beings and chimpanzees, we have some similar traits physically. Because of this, Darwinists say, Look at this physical trait, look at this physical trait, therefore they have a common ancestor. Well, this is an assumption, and this assumption is known as homology. Similarities are due to common descent. Now, fair enough, you can have that assumption and you can come up with, you know, they have these nice neat diagrams in textbooks and they say human beings and chimpanzees split up about six million years ago. Funnily enough, a few decades ago, they said it was not 6 million, it's 20 million years ago, so they revised it and dropped it by 14 million years. Nonetheless, it's fine if you actually have that, but when you, when you actually look at how they came up with this figure of 6 million year split and how they believe that, why they actually believe that we have a, a common ancestor with chimpanzees, is because of the assumption of homology. The first thing to realize, it's an assumption, okay? Now, you can't take an assumption and then come up with a conclusion based upon that assumption and therefore say your assumption is true. That's circular reasoning. It is simply an assumption and if there was no problems with it, it would still be an assumption and you know, you can't say it's absolutely true. But we know of a counter example to the assumption of homology which is known as homoplasy, the exact opposite of homology, the assumption of homology, which is similarities which cannot possibly be due to a common descent, such as the marsupial and the uh, uh, placental saber-toothed tiger, one's in North America, one's in South America, they were there, sorry, they've, they're extinct now. They look identical, yet they don't have a common ancestor. Those traits are not due to common ancestry, even though they look so identical. In fact, the placental saber-toothed tiger is closer to a kangaroo than it is to a marsupial saber-toothed tiger. And so homoplasy is, it, it just doesn't exist at a uh, physical level, it also exists at a genetic level. So the, gen the genes for echolocation in bats and dolphins are identical, yet they are not due to common ancestry. So whether you look at the biochemical level, the genetic level, or the physical level, homoplasy exists. So this idea of human chimp ancestry, we worked it out, you know, it's true, there's some serious problems with this idea if you want to try and show it to be a fact. It is actually not a fact. And one of the sort of ways that Darwinists try and uh, show that, you know, this is a no-brainer is, look, you're 99% chimp, you know, you, you've got 99% of DNA which is the same as the chimp. Well, this is a, a, a very speculative idea. In fact, Darwinists don't even know how this figure was arrived at. This figure of 99%, which was published in 1975 by King and Wilson, this was arrived at assuming common ancestry between human beings and chimpanzees. So they actually discarded lots of information. In fact, they discarded non-coding genes, which is the vast majority of the DNA, approximately 95 to 98%, something like that. They discarded that in the study and even what they did compare was very speculative because they compared what was similar and they discarded other things. Now, you can actually go and look at the study yourself and that's exactly what they did. Now, that study is completely subjective and in fact, it's rejected by some biologists I'm gonna, and I'm actually going to explain why. Now, when you look at similarities, when you try and come up with similarities between human beings and chimpanzees genetically, and this I'm getting, um, just giving you a reference here, not a chimp published by Oxford University that uh, the author is Jeremy Taylor. Even though this book, the author does believe in human chimp ancestry, he makes it clear. He says, um, 
Percentage figures, genetically, are based upon what you compare and how you actually compare it. So when we look at uh, biomacromolecules and you make a comparison, you know, DNA, RNA proteins, you can get figures of 99% if you fudge the data like they did in 1975, you can come up with figures of 87%. You can also come up with figures such as 20% if you look at the human and chimp um, protein similarities. But what's, what's important is you can never do an objective comparison between human and chimp DNA. You can't even come up with a figure. It is actually impossible to come up with a figure. And the reason why is explained in Relative Differences, the Myth of 1%, a peer-reviewed journal in science published by John Cohen, where John Cohen and other evolutionary biologists speak about you can't basically calculate humanness versus chimpness. Just to give you a conceptual reason why, these are two different genomes. They look very different in terms of, if you put them side by side, how are you going to compare it? One is actually bigger than the other. You have things like orphan genes, or if you try and do a comparison of orphan genes between human beings and chimpanzees, similarity is actually 0% because they're orphan genes. They only exist in those organisms. So you can't even do an objective analysis. So even, and let's just say, even if, even if the incorrect figure was, which was pushed, uh, which has been pushed for decades, which actually which is mass misinformation, the 99% figure, even if it was 99%, it still wouldn't mean there is common ancestry between human beings and chimpanzees. And this is even admitted by people like Elliot Sober in his book, Evidence in Evolution, The Logic Behind Science, published by Cambridge University Press, where he admits, even if this 99% figure is true, it doesn't mean human beings and chimpanzees must have a common ancestor. Homoplasy, which is similarities genetically, physically, biochemically, exist or exists all over the animal kingdom. So you cannot just take this crude assumption of homology and say it is true that human beings and chimpanzees have a common ancestor. I hope you've learned from this episode just how speculative some of these Darwinian ideas are. And if you have any questions, please comment below.